This is volume three of the Disney Amirithology. Looking at the archetype Ariel or Ariel. And we're just going to look at some links in the story as we read the story. Deep beneath the sea lived a little mermaid named Ariel. So she's already underwater. And this is the age of Aquarius. So here we are as mermaids, Ariel also being aerial from the sky. We can fly, but we're finding ourselves in a time where we're underwater. And it says she loved exploring her underwater home with her friend Flounder, but dreamed of living on land as a human. So we have that reference again to a dream and wanting to live as a human, or always wanting to go to the next phase. And it always has something to do with either the mainland, a ball being royal, or being a human, being married to a prince, being married into royalty. Common theme. Ariel was always searching for human treasures. So the secrets and the treasures to humanity, the riches and the power behind what governs humanity was something that we search for and have searched for and will search for in this underwater age where, we're, where we have to swim, where we have to be schooled, fish move in schools. And this is the underwater story. Disney takes us underwater. Disney takes us into the 2020s. When she and Flounder found a strange forked object, they swam to the surface to find Scottle the seagull. So they found when her and her, when Ariel and her friend Flounder uh, found an object, then they find something that reminds them of, well, for Ariel at least, she finds an aerial companion. She finds an a angel, a spirit guide. She finds something from the higher place, something that is not underwater. She's underwater. And she comes up out of the water to meet something from above the land. Because the land is the meeting ground between what lies beneath and what lies or flies above. He says, it's a dingle hopper, he, he proclaimed. Ariel's father was King Triton, ruler of the sea. He thought humans were dangerous. So Poseidon who governs over Aquarius, who governs over the underwater world, he looks at humans as being dangerous. He's the type that will protest against humanity. He's the, he's, he's the type of king that will limit freedom of speech. He's the type of kingdom who, the type of king, he holds the trident. He would limit the human movement. He would limit human growth. He feels like there should be a separation between them, that we are not to share realms. So, King Triton, who represents King Poseidon, is over the sea and does not wish to meet with man on the middle ground. He wants to stay beneath. When he learned that Ariel had been to the surface, see, he wanted to keep her deep under. Some things want to keep you deep under. But we're trying to get to the surface. We're not, the goal in this underwater era of human history is not to go deeper underwater, but to swim to the surface and get out of the water. He forbade her to ever go again. Then he asked Sebastian the crab to keep an eye on her. Crabs in the buckets, they'll keep an eye on you. And their goal in their weapon is their pettiness. Crabs in a bucket being real crabby. Oh yeah, crabby crabs will keep their eye on you, Ariel, so that you don't ever get to the surface, so that you don't ever get above water. They don't even want you to get to the surface, let alone get out and swim. They don't even want you to see what the possibilities above the ceiling are. Ariel continued to go to the surface. She continued. So there's something in us, humans, that is still, no matter how deep underwater we get, something in us just has to swim up to the surface. Even though we lived underwater all our life, 
We just fantasize and dream of what it would be like. How many of us are just swimming through life and just want to know what it would be like to walk? Ario. Shout out to Disney. Wow. Excellent writer. Uh, one night, Ario uh, comes across a terrible storm that sweeps across the sea. Ariel and Flounder watched as a prince fell from a huge ship off a huge ship. I must save him, she cried. This is Peter and Jesus in the walking on water story with the faith. When we go up to the surface to swim up to the surface, there'll be a storm there and a prince will fall. When we swim up to the surface, the powers in the upper realms are shaken Princes will fall if we get to the surface because the power of what we're harnessing underneath is so important and so needed and so necessary to the surface that just the fact in the act of us swimming to the surface brings the creatures from above down to land to meet us, even though we are from underwater and they are from the sky. King Triton forbids this. Ariel pulled Prince Eric to shore and sang to him. Then she swam away. She sang her song. When she came across man, when you come across people, when you come across opportunities, when you come across subscribers, sing your song to them and then swim away. This is what Ariel did. We don't we don't have to beat them over the head with anything. Just sing your song. Sing your song. Because you made it above the surface. And it was, a, it was a reason. It was a purpose for your reaching the surface. Because somebody above the surface was getting ready to drown beneath the surface. Because they are not from beneath the surface. Even though they're a prince and own things above the surface. They are not from beneath the surface. Once they fall to sink beneath the surface, they will drown. But you can be both beneath the surface and on land. So there's people who need you, who can't survive the, between the different layers of reality. They don't know the high-minded things. And they don't understand how things go on the land. And they can't survive underwater. So as intermediaries, we have to swim out of our realm or fly down from our realm or walk and, and swim and fly out of our realm for that meeting. Desperate to see Prince Eric again, Ariel agreed to give her voice to the evil sea witch Ursula. So she signed a deal. She wanted to see the prince again. She was connected to something on land. And when you're connected to something on land, where you feel desperate over something that grows out of the ground, you're desperate to see man again. You're desperate to see that royalty again. You're desperate to be around it. And where there is desperation, there's a witch waiting, and the witch is green. The evil sea witch, Ursula. So not only are there crabs underwater with us, there are also sea witches under there. And they want to bribe us with the things that we want to see on the surface. Ursula cast a spell and turned Ariel into a human. But if Prince Eric didn't kiss Ariel by sunset on the third day, she would become a mermaid again. So in her desire to connect with things on land, she became as the land but she would lose that real experience. It would be only temporary because she sold herself out to the spell of Ursula. And if the sun goes down and if the light stops shining and when it gets dark, when night falls, again, there's that midnight reference, there's a time limit on what the land can offer you in terms of comfort, relief, royalty. The world cannot permanently tell you who you are. Are even worse than that, she will belong to the sea witch forever. So she belongs to her right now. 
but that will be an eternal case just for something on land. See, King Triton was trying to protect her from that. But he didn't communicate this. He should have just came on and said, no, because if you get attached to anything on land, the sea witch Ursula will use that against you to curse you. Charmed by her silent beauty, Prince Eric showed Ariel his kingdom. So he showed her his world. He showed her his reign. He showed her the source of power on land. Ariel loved being with the prince in the human world, but the two had not yet kissed. The words didn't match up. The belief didn't match up between the dream world and being underwater, between flying and being underwater, between ruling the world and being under it. These two things have not yet met at the mouth. They haven't met at the words. These things are still being turned over inside the mind and the heart. Like, is this real? The true proclamation and declaration has not come out the mouth yet. It has not kissed. Worried that Prince, er that Prince Eric was falling in love with Ariel, Ursula transformed herself into the beautiful Vanessa. So the witch went a step further because she knew that if love came into the picture, the spell would be broken. Because love is what guarantees you freedom in each realm. This is where the limits disappear. Love, it worried the sea witch. She was going to make the prince fall in love with her instead. So now the plans are changing. This is what happens when you sign up with a sea witch. If they don't like the way things are turning out, they'll change the terms, they'll change the contract, they'll change the conditions. They'll change the system. They'll change the, <laughs> they'll change the program on you. Disguised as Vanessa and using Ariel's voice, the sea witch cast a spell on Prince Eric. He thought he was in love. So she started working enchantments on the surface because even though the witch is underwater, Witches are not limited to one realm by default because their assignment takes place in all realms, virtually. He was going to marry Vanessa. Ariel had lost her true love. The one thing that she went on land to get, she sold her soul to try to get, and it was taken by the one to whom she sold her soul. This is the trick, Ariel. Be careful in Aquarius, because not all alliances are good for you, and we are in the age of alliances. Just before sunset on the third day, here we go with the third day again. That's, that's a, resu a resurrection trigger word, trigger word for rising from the dead, rising from the ignorance, rising from the blindfold, the veil, the third day. The Scotty discovered that Vanessa was Ursula in disguise. He hurried to warn, he hurried to warn Ariel, or I should say Scuttle rather. Scuttle discovered that Vanessa was Ursula in disguise. He hurried to warn Ariel. Again, there goes that sky friend again. There goes that above thinking again, that above wind. If you're animus, it's from a higher realm and a higher level of understanding for yourself. These things will help you to see through the disguises. This is what will help you see through the different kinds of craft that may be set up against you. And notice, it doesn't call Ursula a witch. It calls her an evil witch. That's key. Because for all we know, the bird that's helping Ariel out could also be a witch, but a good one. Because he's, he's able to see through the illusion. As Sebastian went to King Triton, went to find King Triton, Sebastian, the crab, Ariel and Flounder raced to catch Prince Eric's ship. With the help of her friends, Ariel was able to stop the wedding my goodness, and get her voice back. See, the merging between the things that we sell our souls out for, those things tend to get in the way of us 
earning our true voice because when we sign up and sell our souls to evil witches of this underwater matrix, we end up losing who we really are, losing what our real purpose and our real assignment was about. We end up losing our voice because our desires and the one to whom we sold our soul to are in, in it to get married because one has bewitched the other. So we have been used as bait. So we got to get our voice back if we don't have it. We have to get our voice back. Released from Ursula's spell, Prince Eric realized that Ariel was the one he truly loved. But it was too late. The sun went down before Ariel and the prince could kiss. She was a mermaid once more. And she belonged to Ursula. To save his daughter, King Triton gave Ursula his great powers and became her prisoner. Now I am the ruler of all the ocean, shouted Ursula. So even the king, as guarded as he was, he still had love in his heart. He was just protective because perhaps his wisdom and his vision, the holder of the trident, was able to see this and was trying to avoid all of this in the first place by saying just don't go to the surface because it can get very complicated just don't go to the surface anymore Ariel so he has good reason because look at where things have turned that that part in us that conscious in us that says go this way go that way that inner voice that's always right we have to follow it because sometimes it's telling us not to go to the surface for a season, but eventually we will have to go. At, as Ursula grew in size and towered above the sea, Prince Eric jumped aboard an old ship. He steered his jagged bow toward Ursula's heart with a howl, the sea which disappeared in the waves. With Ursula gone, King Triton regained his powers. Seeing Ariel's love for Prince Eric, the king granted her wish. She became human, so she wanted to become human, but she got it through the king rather than through the witch. The king was smarter than the witch, got the witch to think he was sacrificing his life to the witch, but tricked the witch. The part that's in you, your intuition, is smarter than what attacks you from the outside. And you can get what you love on land, but you have to go through a war when you first crack the surface of things. Ariel and Prince Eric married and lived happily in a castle by the sea. Prince Eric didn't even take her away from memories of where she came from. He didn't, he didn't discard her past. He didn't disregard where she came from. They lived happily in the heights, in the luxury, in the lap of the land, but overlooking the water. This is the Disney Scrolls, Volume 3. Ariel, 